<laughs> I don't know if there's a good-looking woman up there somewhere that you know, got in corner. No, the good-looking woman's down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> Y'all getting in there okay? Yeah, but I don't know about a belt. Okay, let's put this thing in gear and we'll get out of here. Yeah. There's a ride These are the voyages of the Airstream Gemini, its continuing mission to explore old and new parks. The Airstreamer YouTube Show. Starring Airstreamers Jim and Michelle. Also starring Airstream International as Gemini. We set up our Airstream Gemini at the Oak Hollow Campground in High Point, North Carolina. Oak Hollow is a beautiful campground located on Oak Hollow Lake in High Point, North Carolina. You can learn more about Oak Hollow in our previous video linked here. One of the reasons we chose to stay here is that we would be just a short distance from Michelle's aunt and uncle, Ev and Al, and cousins, Scott and Annette. Being on the road has given us the opportunity to connect with family living in other states that we haven't seen in years. We traveled north with Evan Al from High Point to the small town of Mount Airy, the boyhood home of movie and TV star Andy Griffith. It's a visitor center. Let's go in. It's a visitor it's a center? center. We may bring pick up a map. Um, uh, well, I guess originally we're all from Michigan, okay. but we're, they live here now. They live in High Point. We're in High Point now, <laughs> and and they're down camping for now. Are there any kind of tours or anything? There are. Uh, there's a squad car tour that you can do. That's, it's $50 for the car, okay. so it'd be twelve fifty a person. And I can call, are you ready to go if they can take you? Oh, we were just kind of wanting to get the information. I also saw there's trolley. There is a trolley. The trolley is $20 a person. The okay. squad car is going to be $12.50 a person. Okay. It's the exact same tour, but the trolley does let you get on and off and take pictures. Okay. So, so the squad car just takes you around. But how uh, long is that? The squad car lasts about 35 or 40 minutes. Okay. And this one lasts about 55 minutes. Okay. Uh, is 94 years old. So, the two green barber chairs are 98 years old. So this is yeah. what, what they actually filmed on TV. No, this was a pattern for the pattern. shop on oh, the show. Oh, oh. And that was the pattern for the Ford on the show. Oh. Dad actually cut in his hair from that second green chair in there from 1947 to 1952. He said there's usually a barber, but he went up the street about a half hour ago and has, hasn't seen him since. Uh -huh. He Is it be. the winery up there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a good-looking woman up there somewhere that you know, got in corner. No, the good-looking woman's down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Listen, don't start that stuff for me. I'll call a barn. We can go in there? Yeah, go okay. in and look around, take pictures, whatever you'd like to do. This was the chair they gave Dad in 1947 
At that time, Deb was 22, just fresh out of barber school. Oh. Andy was 20 and a junior at Carolina. Yeah. And so from 47 to 52, when Andy left North Carolina and went to New York, this is where he sat when Dad cut his hair. Then about 1980, the other barbers had all passed away, just leaving Dad as the last one to cut his hair. And one of his customers came in one day and said, well, Russ said, they're all gone with you. I guess we just call you Floyd. Yeah. And that's a picture of Dad and both the door back here in the back is a picture of Dad sitting in his chair. And up there in the top back corner, the painting of Dad cutting Andy's hair. Dad was so well known that in 1992, he'd never been to Kentucky, but he was commissioned as a Kentucky Colonel. And in 2000, Dad was inducted in the National Barber's Hall of Fame. And also in 2000, he was listed on the National Wrestler of Who's Who. Now that's prestigious. Michelle and I are in the town of Mayberry. Well, Mount Airy. We're here in front of the Whittling Wall. This is a new sculpture that's been put up here in Mount Airy, North Carolina. And Mount Airy is the birthplace and home to Andy Griffith of The Andy Griffith Show. And that show was based on his childhood memories of growing up in this small, friendly town in North Carolina. Have you ever heard of Mount Airy? Have you ever been here? If you have, put in the comments below when you visited. Jim, one yeah. in, he said one in the front. You want the front, Jim? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Y'all getting in there okay? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know about a belt. Let me we'll see. This this is you don't have to wear them unless you want to. Oh, to okay. Good. I'm okay. not gonna you didn't have no. <laughs> no, cars didn't used to have seatbelts. I'm blind and one eye can't see out of the hood. <laughs> Excellent. I drive braille uh, with the braille. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know what that feels like. I'm blind in one eye, too. <laughs> you know, I keep joking about stuff like that. I'm very fortunate. Yeah. A few things are tore up, but nothing's gone completely. Yeah. Other yeah. than my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming to Mount Airy, folks. My name is Steve Talley. I was born and raised here in Mount Airy. I've lived here all my life. Oh, good. I came into this world ball headed and broke, and I'm going out the same way. <laughs> Excellent. But Sounds you're going to go to right. Mackinac before that happens. Going to Mackinac before that happens. Yeah. yeah. Now, the tour is going to take about 40 minutes or so, somewhere along in there. Okay. okay. And I've got a lot of stuff I want to tell you about, so I'm talking about the whole trip. Okay. okay. At any time, if you have a question, please interrupt me and ask your question. Okay. okay. Wait, just ask, ask uh -huh. me a question. All right. Now, as you know, the show is loosely based on Andy growing up here. Uh, however, that's why people call it Mayberry. However, we do have another name also. We're known as the Granite City. We have the world's largest open-faced granite quarry here in Mount Air. Our quarry is so large that on a clear day it can be seen from space. The granite is known as Mount Airy White. It's white with little black specks in it. A cubic foot weighs 165 pounds. Okay, let's put this thing in gear and we'll get out of here. How does that work? <laughs> Get out of the way, people. Uh, don't worry, I'll wake them up here. Barry has to do it. They probably want to ride it too. <laughs> <laughs> Off to jail. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Here's one of the granite churches on the left. This is the Boundary Friends Meeting. Quaker Church. The Quaker, yeah. Quaker Church. Now, there are 
20 or so churches made from the granite. Why do I say 20 or so? Every time I count, I get a different number. So oh. there's, there's around 20. Okay. <laughs> They're also known as the buckle of the Bible Belt because we have so many churches. There are a lot of stick and brick churches around too. And so if you're looking for your religion, we've probably got it. <laughs> if not, I know where there's a church for sale and you can start your own. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> now, there is another very famous person from Mount Airy other than Andy Griffin. Yeah. She's a female country music singer. Okay, she was very popular in the 1970s. Her most popular song is one called Happiest Girl in the Whole oh. USA. That's so nice. So that's the Fargo lady? That's exactly correct. Oh, okay, that's the mirror. We saw the mural and we're like, who is this? What's her name? Is this Donna Fargo. 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 Donna, Donna Fargo. Fargo. Oh. She was raised about five miles out this road. Really? In a little area called Slate Mountain. She decided that she wanted to be a school teacher. She had a brother who had a restaurant in California. She moved out with him and she finished her teaching certificates to teach in California. You'll never guess what she wanted to teach. Yes. English. Huh? English. English. <laughs> Now, can you imagine a fine Southern girl with a wonderful Southern accent in California teaching English? <laughs> I'm sure some people were a little baffled at times. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think that's a polite way to put it. And can you see a Sean Penn type talking to Donna Fargo? Y'all. 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 That was one wonderful song. Oh, I oh. remember that. So you remember the song? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Now, if you look really sharp up to your right, you can see part of the park right through there. Oh, yeah. Now, as we turn in, if you look on the hill here, you'll see my summer home. Oh, yes. <laughs> it only leaks when it rains. Okay, now let's talk about Andy Griffin. Andy was born and raised here at Mount Airy. He was born in 19... 26, and he was an only child. His dad worked in a furniture factory. His mom never worked a lot outside the home. And he was born during the time of the Depression, and it was very hard for practically everyone. Families had to live together so they could make ends meet and take care of each other. Andy and his mom and dad lived with relatives until 1935. In 1935, Andy's dad bought a three-room house. Not three bedrooms, but a three-room house. And we're going to go by Andy's home place and talk about it soon. He went to college at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. He majored in religion. He wanted to be a Moravian minister. Really? Really. He was a minister. Well, he started out to be a minister. But he changed his major. He went into the theater, music, and the arts. And he met a girl named Barbara. Andy and Barbara would later marry. Andy and Barbara would do a play called The Lost Colony. Andy and Barbara did that play seven years. Two years in college, five after they graduated. And they were there a lot. And Andy loved Manio to such a degree. He bought property there early in his life. He maintained a full-time residence there his entire life. When Andy Griffith died, he was living full-time in Mania. And when Andy died, he had planned his own funeral. What he wanted done, when he wanted it done. He wanted to be buried on his own property, on Roanoke Island in Manio, North Carolina. He wanted to be buried there five years after, I mean, five, within five hours of his death. He died at 7 a.m. He was buried before noon that same day. Wow. He was buried in his pajamas. He was buried in a wooden cask. How old was he when he died? He died in 2012, and I can't remember the year, but that's when he died, it was in 2012. Now, the reason Andy did that, the burying that way, he knew had he made it public when he died, there would have been thousands of people coming to Mania and really taking the privacy of the people of Mania away and turning it into a circus. He didn't want that. He wanted it real low key. And I understand, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. 
And I told my wife the same thing. I know when I die, there will be thousands of people coming back. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a few bill collectors in there too. And I told her I'd like to be cremated and want my ashes dumped over the people at Mayberry Day. <laughs> I'm gonna get in everybody's hair before I die. Oh my God. And she said, you know, Steve, that's the only way you'll ever have a smoking hot body too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, now straight ahead, you'll see the piece de resistance. Oh. This is the mural of Andy Andy. You'll never believe how this guy did it. Spray cans. Wow. He did it with spray cans? Yeah. Wow. Did with spray cans. He did one of Donna Fargo we're going to go see. And uh, it, it I wanted really, to see how he did it. He yeah. does use spray can. I mean, it's the dirtiest thing I have seen. And you got the little wrinkles up on the forehead. Yeah. And it's really good. Yeah. It's amazingly good, I guess, is the way to say it. Okay, we're on Main Street now. And as we go down, let me blow the siren a little bit. Here we go. Right here is the mural of Don Fargo on your right. Oh yeah, we've seen that. Seen that. Yep. That's pretty cool, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On down a little bit further, you'll see a great big green awning right there. Yeah. That's where the Grand Theater used to be. It's right there, next to Opie's Ice Cream Parlor, mm -hmm. next to Floyd City Barbershop, mm -hmm. next to the world famous Snappy Lunch. Oh yeah. They have the pork chop sandwich. They close about 1:30 every day. They have to take the rest of the day to bail the money out. <laughs> you saw the statue of Andy and Opie. Yeah. That represents the beginning of every show. Andy, Opie are going to the fishing hole. You remember Opie picks a rock up and he throws it to the water. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now the rest of the story. Opie was five years old when that happened. He wasn't strong enough to throw a rock and hit the water. Oh. So one of the stagehands, a guy named Reggie, Get in the bushes. Oh. Opie made the motion, Reggie throwed the rock. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the, the story. Rest of the story. <laughs> Good day. I wondered how he did that. I'm going to stop at Andy's home now. Home now. Oh, his home place. Oh. Of course, it was his home house, I guess. Yeah. On the right. His home place is now owned by the local Hampton Inn. Yeah. Oh. So you can stay here. Oh, I it's a, see. It's a tick over two hundred dollars a night well, for the whole house, not up. just a room. Andy's daddy bought this house in nineteen thirty-five for eight hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! It was three rooms. Wow. The last house I built, the front door was eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's been a few years ago. They moved here in nineteen thirty-five, and they lived here till nineteen sixty-six. That is Andy's mom and dad. Andy, of course, left in 45 to go to college, and he graduated in 49. So he was essentially gone except when he visited. Now, they lived here until 66. Andy loved his parents a lot. Really, he, was, he did love them. And he moved them both to California, bought them a house so he could take care of them. They lived in California until they died. They both are buried in Forest Lawn Cemetery in California. In California. In California, and he's buried in North Carolina on Roanoke Island in Manio, North Carolina. Uh, now, Andy and his mom and dad, as I said, lived here in 1966. Andy sold the house for six hundred. I mean, six thousand dollars. Six thousand. There were three rooms at that time. Now, this was not a room where them windows are. That was a porch. Uh, the kitchen had a wood cook stove. The bedroom had a, uh, no fire, no heat, and there was no central heat in the house and the living room had a fireplace. And he said in the winter when it was really cold, he'd stand by the fireplace and get as hot as he could get. He said, I'd jump into bed, mom would cover me up with a bunch of quilts, so I wouldn't freeze. Mm -hmm. And he said, some mornings I would wake up and there would be snow all over the bed where I was sleeping, where it blew through the cracks in the water. Right, right. Uh, that was a very common thing. Okay. I remember that. We're on farmhouse. We go, on brick, I grew up on a farm. Walls, what the thing? No insulation at all. No. no. Upstairs, no. three bedrooms, and you could see we your breath there. in the bedroom. And yeah. and the windows got all froze up when it was cold, and uh, we'd sleep three in a bed. 
And there was so there were sixteen of us. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen <laughs> kids, nine boys and seven girls. How did you come up with enough names for sixteen elephants? You know? Huh? Are you Steve number one or Steve number two? No, they Steve came up with names. <laughs> no, my dad used to uh, get up early and fire up the furnace. <laughs> We had a furnace that. Never asked him what he did in his spare time. We had a furnace that had a <laughs> had, had a grate in the dining room down below, and and that's the only heat we had. We used to get up and sit on the furnace as it as he was getting it going and get warm, and the boys of course had to get up and go out to the barn and help with the cows and stuff. Now the first time sure of Andy Taylor was seen on TV was in 1960 in an episode of the Danny Thomas show, Make Room for Danny. That was the premiere episode, and Don not saw it. He called Andy and said, don't the sheriff need a deputy? Don was hired to play straight man to the comedian Andy Griffin. Andy said, I learned quickly I needed to play straight man to Don Knox. <laughs> Don was the catalyst of the show. Well, folks, we've come to the end of the journey. I think this is some of the granite that's from Mount Airy. They're known for their quarry. I like that, the guys that get together. Yeah. It's the bathroom. Well, outhouse boys. Outhouse boys. Outhouse boys. We've been calling well, all the things. Very good. Where y'all from? Michigan. Michigan, what part? Uh, Port Huron. <laughs> we all picked a pretty time to come through here traveling. Oh, it's these beautiful. These leaves and everything, boys. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God showing off. Yeah. Sure is. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Keep night, playing. Thank you. Y'all right, have a safe trip. Thank, thank you. you.